Well, hello, I'm back again. This is Brother West. This is Prophet West. Uh, back to you again um, with a part two, with a part two a little bit um, to um, give even some more, I guess, clarity on the emotional um, manipulation, the emotional um, uh, infidelity, uh, the emotional um, cheating. And what I meant by that basically is basically keep everybody out of your relationship. Keep everybody out of your marriage because you don't need another voice talking to him or her and that person is not present. That's why it's always good to have somebody who's a professional, who's saved, spirit-filled, who teaches, who's a pastor, someone who God has chosen to be able to um, help you, counsel you on how to reason together and find a, uh, a answer or find peace, a find an agreement. And for those of you who um, have divorced and and there's always different situations and different uh, exceptions to the rules and different things uh, and different cases. But I'm just talking about generally. So as far as when it comes to uh, who you talk to, usually as a general rule, you don't talk to someone who's emotionally invested or attached to your situation because they're going to give it an emotional invested, invested opinion. It's going to be biased. That's why you want to talk to someone who spirit feel who's not biased, but who's unbiased, but always include those two people, always include the, the, both of the, the parties. And just like I said, when you got together, when you, when you married, it's between you, that person and God, not another person, but God. And so uh, that's why the Bible said, what I put together, let no man separate. Don't let nobody come in between. When you invite people into your relationship, when you invite people into your, your situation, your problem, or the thing that you're working out, uh, then you're inviting them in. Then it's, it's out of will. It's out of the will. It's in a violation. That's why God said, what he put together, let no man separate. In other words, when someone else comes in, that brings separation, especially if the person has an interest. Now, say for example, if, if your boy, your boy or your, your girlfriend or just ladies, if you, you're, going, you, you're having problems with your man or your husband, the worst thing you can do is go talk to another man, especially if that, that man has interest in you. So because if that man has interest in you, he's going to say everything he can to push you away from him where you can have interest in him. And he's going to say everything that your husband ain't saying. Like manner with a man. If you're going through a thing and a situation in your marriage and you, your marriage is on rocks, the worst thing you can do is go to a woman, especially if that woman likes you or don't want you to be with that person or don't like that person. They, they're going to give you advice to get away. They're going to tell you everything to get away from that person. When God is saying to come together. And in those cases where you separated or uh, you divorce, it's happened. It's done. There's life after divorce. There's life after those things. But for those people who are, are separated and you think that there's a way that you can get back. And there's a way if you went through counseling, if you've done the counseling, if you've done everything you know how to do and still nothing working, then, I mean, that's between you and that person and God. You know, especially when it comes to violence and when someone is going upside your head. You know, I would never advise to stay with someone if they're going upside your head. I mean, because then it comes to the matter of your life. You know, your life is so important, especially uh, if you have kids. You know, take care of yourself. And But what I'm saying is that be wise. Be wise on the people that you talk to that get in your head. Because the worst kind of advice is bad advice. Because bad advice can destroy so much. But also what I was going to talk about, I was going to talk about briefly emotional blackmail. And basically what I was going to talk about in addition to the emotional blackmail is that it's but blackmail is when someone has something of value and they use it to get what they want. And oftentimes if you take a baby and I'm going to come back to a part two with this right here because I don't want to take too long with this. But when you with a baby, the Bible says to train a child up in the way that he should go. And when he's older, he won't depart from it. Also, the Bible said foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child, but the word of correction will drive it far from them, which means that if you don't drive that foolishness out of that child when that child is young, when that child becomes an adult, that foolishness is still in them. It's going to grow up too. It's going to grow up too. Chastisement. You have to drive that thing out, drive that disobedience out through correction, through the word. You know, it don't have to be physical. It could be whatever, you, whatever kind of way 
you can get the message. But the message is letting him realize that, that he, he or her, whatever child you have, that there's a consequence. That's what it's about, a consequence. But in the, in, the, in the thing of the emotional blackmail, what a child will do, when a child doesn't have or get its way, that child will cry, that child will act out of, uh, and kick on the floor. And what that child is doing, that child is trying to deflect. And what that child is doing, that child is acting that way that child can get or have his way. And just like I mentioned, foolish is a child and that food is not being driven out of them. And when they get, get older, it's still in them. There's many adults in marriage, in life, in relationships, that foolish is still in them. And so what happens when they don't get their way, they act out. Even in a conversation, if you're talking to them, they will deflect with an anger. They will deflect with an anger or become angry as a deflect to, to change or to get their way to stop you from talking about how you feeling and what you're saying and listen to them. And so it's a form of manipulation, just like anger. Anger is not an emotion. Anger is a substitute emotion, but anger is energy. But also anger is a substitute to hide uh, or not to face certain things. So many times people, they use anger as a cover to not deal with certain things. And in the case of emotional blackmail, oftentimes it starts from like you having something something of value to that person and you use that that you have a value that they like against them to do what you want them to do not letting them know in your mind what you're doing that's deception that's manipulation and that's also witchcraft manipulation uh guys use it when it comes to money they use it with certain things to get that woman to do something well if you do this baby you can have that F filling the head with dreams filling the head baby i can give you the world just feeding their head. That's manipulation. They're using an emotion. They're using her emotion against her because there's something that she likes. And, and saying, if you want what you like, then you got to do what I want you to do. Then you can get it. A lot of times these guys, when even when it comes to in the music industry, they'll use sex. A lot of these girls, these young ladies have to produce or perform in order to become initiated, in order to be able to uh, get on their team, to be able to sing, to be able to dance. That's manipulation. You're using something that someone loves and use it against them to get them to do what you want them to do. See, this is why the Bible says uh, a man treasure is a uh, heart is where his treasure is, a treasure where his heart is. And see what, what manipulation is, people use what you consider as treasure. Even women, they'll use sex as a form of manipulation. Where, well, if you well, if you want this, then you gotta do that. If you want to be with me, you got to do that. It's almost like an agreement where it's almost like a bargaining chip where they use something of value as a bargaining chip to get you to do something for them, for their own pleasing. That's not right. That's not right at all. And that's manipulation. That's blackmail. But also with that emotional uh, infidelity, I won't come back and talk to that because, see, we have to be careful of our mouth, especially when we get hurt and we're having problems. We're having problems with someone we love. We're having problems in general. We have to be careful who we talk to. I know you want to get it out. I know you want to express it. You want to tell, but you just can't tell anybody. Because just like I said, the worst kind of advice is bad advice. Have a good day.